This is the second in a series of videos showing how SharePoint can be used as a solution to various business problems. In this video, I'm going to talk about collaboration. In this modern world with an increased demand for home working, a rise in global business, and particularly recently, a need to cut back on travel costs, the need for remote collaboration is growing enormously. People have to be as productive whether they're sitting at their desk, working from home, or out visiting a customer or partner. SharePoint offers a vast range of capabilities to allow effective collaboration across different locations or even time zones. There are team sites, blogs, wikis, task lists, contact lists, shared calendars, discussion boards, much more. In this demo, I'm going to give a few highlights. This is a demo of a project site I've created within SharePoint. I created this site using the inbuilt team site template, but then added some extra content. A very obvious part of this web page is the task list, complete with this Gantt chart. This is created from one of the inbuilt list types. It gives a very visual summary of the various project tasks, including a status bar to show progress. If you have a distributed team working together on a project, it can be very difficult to keep track of who's doing what and how far along they are. With the SharePoint page, it's very easy for members of the team to update the status of their tasks, see what's going on with the others. The project manager can load up this task list, see which tasks are overdue or shown as not started, and follow up with the person those tasks are assigned to. I'll open up this task list to get more detail. Here, there are various top columns associated with each task, title, who it's assigned to, status, and so on. Some of these columns are there by default, but you can add others. Here I've added a column for budget. Looking at this menu up on the right, I'm offered various views. These are the views that come out of the box. I can also create my own. I can choose the columns I wish to display as well as their order. I can filter the entries by multiple different fields and formulae, and I can sort out the tasks into new orders. I can add functions to the values, such as summing up a particular column. This ability to create views can be applied to any list on SharePoint. You can also set alerts on lists. I can manually choose that I want to receive alerts, or someone can choose for a group to be alerted. So the project manager can go in and update settings to alert the entire team. I can choose the types of changes I want to be alerted to. For example, when new types are added to a list or when tasks are altered. I can also choose the types of tasks that I want to be alerted about. I can choose to be told about changes to all tasks or only tasks that are assigned to me or which show up in a particular view of the task list if I've, if I've defined specific filters. Finally, I choose how I want to be alerted, whether as an immediate email or as a daily or weekly summary. Alerts are a great way of keeping up to date with changes. You don't have to keep checking back to see what's going on. You just get sent a message about the things you care about. Let's go back to the main page and see what else is there. At the top of this page, there's this survey. It's very easy to create simple surveys with text boxes, choices from lists and other standard options. Then you can display the results as a graphical summary. Once you've written all the questions, you can also add some branching so that users see different questions based on the responses to earlier questions. When you fill out surveys, there's often an other option which comes with a please specify text box. With these surveys, you can choose to only show that text box when the user selects other. Or you can create a whole series of questions that only get shown to people who made a specific choice at an earlier part of the survey. This sort of thing is very good for getting opinions, collecting feedback and things like that. Some companies spend a lot of money getting contractors to design surveys and analyse the results, but you can do it yourself very easily with the inbuilt capabilities of SharePoint. On this navigation menu down the left hand side, there are links to various bits of content. I'll go into document libraries in a lot more detail when I talk about content management. Suffice it to say that these are places for a team to store and share documents and work together on them. Instead, I'll look at some of these lists. I have a calendar here. 
I've put some recurring appointments in this calendar. One is a weekly team meeting, the other is daily user testing. I can go into this element and see more information about it. I can edit the whole series or just a single item. If I want, I can include specific information that's re relevant to every meeting. I'm going to add a new event to this calendar. There are certain bits of required information, such as the title for the event, along with when it starts and finishes, but I can add more information. As I added more columns to the task list, I can add more fields for these events. At a calendar level, I can add a field for all events to state whether they are, for example, mandatory or optional. There are also various options for the calendar as a whole. I can set alerts as I did with the task list. But what's very useful is, this op is an option to collect to Outlook. This creates a copy of the calendar within my Outlook calendars folder. This copy stays up to date when people make changes to this calendar, so people can see their own calendars alongside the team calendar. You can also add events to this calendar through Outlook in exactly the same way you would add events to your own calendar. We also have a project issues list. Project issues and project risks are two of the inbuilt list templates that are designed to ease project management within SharePoint. Here you get such categories as issue title, status, priority, and so on. Again, this is customizable so you can add other columns as your situation requires them. It's quite common for project sites to include an issues list that everyone can add new items to as they arrive. The project manager can set up an alert on the list and know instantly when the project hits a problem. Going down this navigation menu, we have a team discussion board. If you're familiar with online forums, you should be able to understand the potential for this feature. With a discussion board, members will post a topic and others will reply to it, or reply to other replies. The idea of a discussion board is you don't have to be located in the same place or even the same time zone to have a meaningful conversation. It beats email by having the replies gathered neatly in one place, searchable and ordered. If you want to know what's being said in the various forums, there are two options. You can set alerts to be told when someone posts to a new topic, or replies to one of your topics, or you can synchronise to Outlook. This creates a folder in Outlook that stores the forum threads, still with this nice threaded view. This way, I can view the discussion thread when I'm offline, but if I'm connected to the server, Outlook would keep the folder up to date so I see any new posts. If I want, I can post a reply or start a discussion topic from Outlook in exactly the same way as I would send an email. So users can still work from Outlook rather than having to check several different places to see what's being said. Continuing down the navigation menu, we have a team blog. This works like blogs on the internet. Someone writes a post sharing news. Other people can comment on it. You can subscribe to blogs so that new posts appear in a blog reader or in Outlook. So you don't have to have different ways of doing things for internal and external blogs. These sort of blogs are great for sharing news about the progress a team is making on a project. The final page on this menu is a wiki. Traditionally, if you had a website for sharing information, one person or a small group of people would have the task of keeping that site updated. If someone spotted something that needed changing, they would have to get in touch with these people and wait for them to make changes. In general, it would not be the main job of those people, to, so updates might take a while. With a wiki, if you spot that something needs updating, you can go in there and change it just by clicking the edit button and the updates happen instantly. This is really great when people know what they're talking about. It's less good if they only think they do. But that's why you have a history. I can just hit this button and see all the previous versions and track who made what changes. In this version, we're shown that I made changes and that I deleted this sentence about how you can delete sentences. You can easily see who's changed what, which prevents abuse of the system. And you can also go back to an older version of the site if there were mistakes made. So that's a brief taster of SharePoint as a collaboration solution.